A very good afternoon. Uh, today we are going to have a discussion on constituent assembly. We have already discussed uh, the impact of uh, colonial administration on India. We have, we have also discussed uh, national movements, all the important events in some greater detail. We have also discussed the constitutional legacy starting from the Regulating Act to Government of India Act 1935 and subsequent uh, developments including uh, uh, Krebs Mission, Cabinet Mission Plan and, and then we concluded. And today we will have a discussion on Constituent Assembly. So we are going to extend the, our discussion further on making of India's constitution to another level. So uh, let's have a discussion on what is constituent assembly and how the idea of constituent assembly evolved in India and what impacts uh, uh, does this body made on the overall making of the India's constitution and uh, what is the contribution and criticism of the constituent assembly uh, as a whole. So let's have a discussion on constituent assembly. And if I go with the meaning of it, and I will simply define as constituent assembly as a representative body chosen for the purpose of drafting the constitution of a country, of a new country, or the revision of the old constitution, or some making some changes. So ultimately, the constituent assembly is a representative institution where people are gathered to draft, to propose, to consider, a new constitution for that country. So this is all about constitution. of constituent assembly is not something new to India. In fact, uh, uh, the whole uh, process of constitution making globally, if we look at the global phenomena, we will find that. So the idea itself in modern times began in 18th century. Uh, and that 18th century, the first wave of constitution making uh, started with. So if look at that, the earliest constituent assembly, I will example of Philadelphia uh, Convention of 1787. That Philadelphia uh, Convention in 1787 was given the task of drafting the Constitution of United States of America. So we had already a model in United States of America having a constitu uh, constituent assembly whose task was to draft a constitution for the newly independent United States of America. So that is most important phenomena we must remember. There was another uh, constituent assembly I, I, uh, I recall now is the national uh, that constitution was being made uh, by the national assembly starting from 1789 to 91 process. So when the uh, French revolution took place, uh, a national assembly was being constituted constituted that task was to frame a constitution from the France. Similarly, in 1791, uh, Poland uh, also got a national assembly to draft its own constitution. So the idea of con having a constituent assembly to draft a constitution was already there. So the first way we have already uh, seen that and accordingly we have uh, seen in India uh, as well. So no, no doubt that uh, during our uh, 19th century, uh, there were many uh, new constitution which came up having uh, uh, a resolution for, for example, that 1848 resolu uh, resolutions and which led to uh, the establishment of many constituent assembly in Latin America as well. So idea of having a constitution by a duly elected or nominated constituent assembly fully de dedicated to the task of constitution making was already there in place. So be it Philadelphia Convention of the United States, be it National Assembly of France or the National Assembly of Poland and many Latin American countries, some 1848 resolutions in 19th century, we have already seen that. Similarly, that the 20th century look at uh, we have seen that after World War II, there was another wave of new countries emerging on the global scene. So after World War 
Uh, first, so many uh, new countries and old countries also got their uh, constitution revised. For example, after World War II, the Poland also got its own constitution, a new constitution. Then we have seen Czechoslovakia uh, and uh, other defeated uh, 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 country like Germany, and Germany also got it, uh, its own constitution, and that constitution is called Weimar Constitution in 1919. So all those uh, countries who were defeated in World War I also got its new constitution, keeping in view of the new development after World War uh, I. So 20th century, after the World War I, witnessed another wave of constitution making globally. So look at that, uh, the, the another development in the 20th century or itself that the development after 1940s and when i'm saying that 1940s i'm referring to the world war second and world war second that ended in 1945 not only ended the war but it also decolonized the many countries most of the uh, uh, colonial countries uh, who were under some uh, uh, some uh, uh, suzerainty or uh, sovereign influence of the foreign countries got liberated on the promises made by the elite powers during uh, World War II. So we have seen lots of newly independent countries emerging on the scene and all uh, countries needed to have their own constitution. So that is most important phenomena we must remember that World War II, like for example, Japan, Australia, Italy and Germany, these constitution, also, these countries who were defeated in the World War II, also got their constitution revised and some new constitution were being made. So new constitution was also being uh, being considered in the uh, Eastern European countries, uh, which were uh, uh, which were under the influence of the Soviet Union uh, during the World War uh, uh, after the World War II. So you must have heard that the Cold War and Cold War, which began between United States of America and Soviet Union that which ideology is the supreme ideology and that should be called as the ruling ideology at that point of time. So the period between 1945 to 1990 was a period of Cold War where the contestations between two ideologies were there and with the collapse of the Soviet Union, it was often been claimed that there is no other ideology except democracy, liberal democracy, which is the winning ideology. So after that, during, after the World War II, so many countries were there. There was a race among the uh, uh, newly independent countries to join either United States of America or Soviet Union. But that is not only the race, but also to make a constitution which may accommodate either a uh, communist spirit in its constitution or the liberal democratic spirit in that constitution. So we have seen that across the... Uh, uh, Eastern Europe and Central Asia and Central Europe, communist world were having a greater influence. And similarly, across Asia and Africa during 1940s and 60s, lots of new countries have, more, have emerged on, on the world scene. The constitution writing has also taken place. And those uh, countries were being maintained by France and Britain. So after France and Britain uh, decolonized their colonial uh, countries. So newly independent countries needed their own constitution. Similarly, <coughs> if I remember that uh, in 1947, uh, uh, in the uh, Sri Lanka uh, constitution was to be made in 1957, the Malaysian constitution was to be made in 1940s. It said that the Indian constitution was also to be made so we have already lots of many newly independent countries were there. Similarly, there was another wave and that wave of democratization, I could say that the period of 1970s are to be remembered as a period of new wave of democratization in which that Greece has come up, Portugal and Spain, they have come up their own constitution. And similarly, in 1990s, uh, with the fall of communism, uh, with the fall of Soviet Union, 15 newly uh, independent countries have emerged to the scene and they also got their own constitution uh, in the uh, 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 in the few, uh, in the post uh, collapse of the soviet union so eastern europe be it estonia latvia lithuania or all other uh, 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 soviet influenced countries who got liberated so they also uh, needed to have their own constitution similarly 
there were so many uh, countries uh, in Africa which also got uh, their own constitution uh, in the 1990s. If I remember that in 21st century, that there were so team change, there were so many political conflict uh, as well at the same time. Those regime change and political conflict reconstructed so many uh, uh, countries across the region of the world. For example, in Africa, we have seen that a country called uh, Kenya and South Sudan, they got new, uh, Kenya got its own constitution, South Sudan, which is a newly independent country, it also got it, its own constitution in 21st century. There is also some countries in Asia which emerged on the scene, like for example, East Timor. East Timor is a newly independent country. It got its own constitution drafted in 21st century. Similarly, Thailand also got its constitution revised and made uh, in the 21st century itself. So uh, if you remember Middle East, and Middle East is the region which combined the area of certain African regions uh, and, the, uh, and the Asian region, West Asian region, where uh, Muslims are, uh, are in sizable uh, number. In those regions, uh, we have seen new constitutions coming up, for example, Iraq, Afghanistan, Egypt, and Tunisia. So these countries have witnessed new constitution uh, in the 21st century. So I can say that the constitution making task is, is not some easy task. It involves huge process. It constitution represents the aspirations, ethics, and values of, of the country. And it has to be accommodated within the framework of the constitution. Therefore, all the constitution makers, con framers of the constitution across the world, they have to put entire energy to have a kind of document which can represent the philosophy of that state, which can guarantee the best life for the people of those reasons. So if if there are struggles, there are uh, challenges with other uh, constitutions involved. There were challenges with India as well, which got its own constitution made. But first we remember that when India, Indian Constituent Assembly was, India was still uh, within the uh, influence, sovereign influence of the United Kingdom. So all the members of the drafting committee, which joined India's constituent assembly were also that uh, being uh, those people who are being elected uh, out of the 1935 Government of India Act provisions in 1937 and they were the one who got uh, elected uh, from their provincial legis uh, legislatures to the constituent assembly. So uh, Indian constituent assembly came into being at that time the Britain was our sovereign master. Similarly, in 1947 in Sri Lanka and um, in 1957 in Malaysia, a British constituent uh, constitution committee were being, uh, being there to review and uh, the constitution of these countries. So the constituent assembly members in Sri Lanka and Malaysia, in after their independence, the, the uh, their uh, constitution assembly members were also being nominated by the British. But in India, the drafting committee initiated under the limited sovereignty of the Britain, but resulted into the uh, expression of the high degree of uh, sovereignty, though, the, though it was being constituted before the independence. So we have so many new things with uh, the Indian situations. We must remember that, and those are important phenomena, that Indian constitution is a masterpiece on its own. And we have to look at the whole phenomena in a particular context. So how that idea of constituent assembly evolved in Indian scenario? So we must uh, uh, prove these questions here, and that is important. Uh, in today's uh, uh, part, let's have a discussion that from where this idea of constituent assembly came in India and when it was being first raised that India needs a constitution of its own and that constitution shall be framed by the Indians alone, not by any other body. That is very, very important question. We must prove it. So let me friend uh, go with the... Uh, uh, 1918 period. So it was, if you remember that in December 1918, uh, 33rd session of the Indian National Congress was being held 
and a resolution was being passed and what was that resolution the resolution of of 1933 uh, uh, 1918 resolution uh, of the indian national congress which happened in delhi says that the principles of self determination shall be applied to india so the resolution of indian national congress in december uh, 1918 saying that the principles of self determination should be applied uh, to uh, to india so idea is means self determination is what that indians shall be able to determine their fate they shall be able to determine not any ekna any other external powers so let indus let indians should decide in what ways they want to govern themselves this is what the whole principle and for the first time in a clear stated terms uh, the indian national congress in 1918 saying that we the indians will decide our own fate not the external power and the resolution clearly implies this that the principle of self determination should be applied to india and this is what the resolution of 1918 says and the moment we asserted that we want to determine our own fate our democratic fate it means that we want to frame our own constitution we want to govern by our own principles not by the principle of an external power like britain similarly if you remember in 1922 in young india mr gandhi mahatma gandhi uh, in a uh, uh, in his uh, journal that the young india was was a very very prominent journal uh, edited by mahatma gandhi in that uh, issue uh, in january of uh, 5 uh, on january 5 1922 that the, he wrote an essay and what he says that swaraj means swaraj means self rule swaraj of his conception would not be a force sorry that uh, i said that the swaraj a self rule of his conception would not be a free gift of the british parliament but a declaration of india's self expression the will of the people of india expressed through her freely chosen representatives see that there is a clear cut reference that will of the people of india expressed through her freely chosen representatives mean that we are not going to have a kind of status a kind of a polity which is being dictated by a foreign power we want to have a country whose fate whose will is being decided by a freely chosen representative of india so it was a clear reference that we want to frame our own rules our own laws our own ways of doing things this is what mahatma gandhi writing in young india in 1922 or on january 5 uh, 5 so this is another development uh, of uh, going ahead with the idea of constituent assembly that the indians now started asserting that we want to have our own constituent assembly or a council which is being freely elected by the people of the country similarly there is another development uh, on 8th february 1924 and in that 1924 motilal nehru introduced a resolution in a uh, in central legislative assembly office he was the member he said that what is that resolution saying that a demand for summoning at an early date of a representative round table conference to recommend in the due regard to the protection of the rights and interests of the important minorities and and the scheme of a constitution of india see that so on 8th february 1924 motilal nehru is saying in the central legislative assembly saying that we want to call a representative round table conference and the task of that round table conference would be to recommend with due regard to the protection of the rights and interest of the important minorities the scheme of constitution of india 
see that the idea of a representative round table to frame the constitution of india was already been put forward by motilal nehru in 1924 see if we uh, if if i ri rightly recall at that point of time lord birkenhead in in uh, 1925 gave a challenge to the indians that that you cannot draft a constitution of your own which is being agreed by all parties see it was an open challenge by lord birkenhead saying to the indians at that point of time that you are so divided amongst yourself that you cannot agree on one draft and one draft shall be treated as a fundamental draft to govern the country like india that was a challenge and the similar challenge was being uh, being uh, issued by by the lord birkenhead uh, when uh, uh, i can say that uh, in simon commission was being constituted he was being sent the commission was being sent to india to uh, review the status and make some recommendations uh, for the case of india and that simon commission which i told you and discuss in greater detail saying that that simon commission no indians were there at the in that uh, Simon Commission, and it was being opposed across India to the name. But uh, that was the whole situation uh, in India. But uh, did that uh, commission uh, came and stayed in India and studied Indian case scenario. But I remember one more case on May 17th, 1927, at the Bombay session of the Indian National Congress, Motilal Nehru again moved a resolution calling upon the Congress Working Committee uh, to frame a constitution for India in consultation with the elected members of the central and provincial legislatures and leaders of political parties. So Motilal Nehru again, while uh, giving a due regard to the challenges, uh, a challenge put forward by the Lord Birkinet, in that know that the Congress Working Committee has to adopt this task. And finally, uh, in May 18, uh, on 18th May 1928, uh, a committee under the chairmanship of the Motilal Nehru Committee, Motilal Nehru, was constituted by Congress Working Committee to determine the principles of the Constitution of India. So they see that the Indians accepted the challenge of the Lord Birkenhead, worked on it, constituted a committee and that committee was headed by Motilal Nehru. In Motilal Nehru, in 1928, on August 10th, came out with his report and that report is often known as Nehru Report. This was the first attempt in India's history when the Indians were uh, given, Indians uh, uh, as attempted to frame the constitution of its own, of its own, that their own country. So the report uh, still uh, called upon that India uh, is, should aspire for dominion status with full responsible government on the parliamentary pattern. So it did not call for a complete independence. That Motilal Nehru's report uh, was basically uh, going with the idea of of uh, in fact that let the India be a dominion state uh, with full responsible government on the parliamentary pattern. Uh, then uh, after that, uh, that report was not being considered. Finally, that uh, there were three rounds of uh, uh, conference, roundtable conferences took place in London during 1930 and 32. The British government has drafted its own proposal for constitutional reforms in India because the Indians were uh, not able to agree on some propositions. Uh, lots of debate and discussions happened in the round table conferences. The first round of table conference was boycotted by the Congress out of some uh, agreement between the uh, Lord Irwin and, and the Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi was being sent to represent Indian National Congress in round table. There some, uh, again some conflict occurred and third round table conference was being boycotted. So finally that uh, Indians uh, did not go uh, with the reform proposals and uh, and at that point of time after the uh, after roundtable conference and white paper was being issued by the then uh, uh, British government in 1933 uh, March 1933 white papers was all about the constitutional reforms that created a base for government of India Act 1935. 
but jawaharlal nehru uh, in an article uh, for its daily herald in uh, on october 2nd 1933 uh, he wrote uh, 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 his opinion like this and this is a very important uh, thing you must remember and he writes that a political solution of the struggle can only come when the indian people can settle their own constitution in a popularly elected constituent assembly so this proposal for constituent assembly accepted first time formally by the congress uh, on june 17th 18th 1934 and and uh, that congress came out in 1934 what nehru uh, wrote in Delhi Herald in 1933, which the same thing was being accepted by the Congress and the idea of a full-fledged constituent assembly was being mooted as a part of the resolution. And in 1934, uh, out of a response to the white paper issued by the British government, let us see the resolution of the Congress saying that, that the only satisfactory alternative to the white paper is a constitution drawn up by a constituent assembly elected on the basis of adult suffrage. So see that the now Congress started making a full fledged demand that that Indian constitution shall be by a constituent assembly and the members in the constituent assembly shall be elected, not nominated. And that election shall be on the principle of universal adult franchise. So the idea is now concretizing that, that we sh shall have our own body to frame our own constitution. We will no longer accept the reforms mooted by the British government. See that the Indians are now maturing in making their demands before the British master. And that is very, very important. And that maturity is being reflected in as well. Mehru, uh, uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, while giving his presidential uh, speech and address, uh, on April uh, 12, 1936, uh, which was uh, for a concept of a constituent assembly where the idea of that how and what ought to be the nature of the constituent assembly was being mooted. And then again, uh, going with the uh, Haripur uh, session of the Indian National Congress, 1938, a demand for a constituent assembly for framing the constitution without any interference by a foreign, foreign country was being mooted. And see that now there is a clear cut demand that we are no longer interested in British government giving up, giving us acts and acts and, after, and reforms and reforms. Those reforms are not meeting the aspirations of the Indians. And therefore, the Indian aspirations of governance can only be met when Indians are involved in drafting the that is most important. So uh, by uh, March 17 and 28, 1940, there was another session at Ramgarh. Uh, in that session, uh, that again the idea of uh, of the Constituent Assembly was uh, was there, and it was being repeated again in its own resolution. So uh, the demand for Constituent Assembly was for the first time authoritatively. Uh, being considered by the British uh, government uh, indirectly by the August offer in 1944. So British government were consistently in denial mode, going with the resolutions of the Indian National Congress to have a constituent assembly of its own. But for the first time that uh, British had conceded to the idea of, of a constituent assembly indirectly though, by when it made uh, its offer in August uh, uh, 1940 that, okay, fine, we will consider this idea. But uh, again, uh, it was not a direct approval that we, 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 we did not go with the offers that we are not interested in offer. We want a concrete resolution. So when uh, the Indians did not go with the offer, then again, uh, British uh, uh, government sent uh, its uh, uh, its own uh, person, and that is called Staff Stafford Cripps, was being sent. He made its own proposal in 1942, and that Cripps proposal, uh, 1942, outlined a concrete, uh, concrete scheme for giving effect to the demand of a constituent assembly. 
so the idea is now that the constitution making uh, uh making now uh, to rest solely and not primarily uh, in indian hands so in august of uh, it was being technically that the constitution making shall be primarily in the hands of indians and but it allows the role of the external uh, forces the british uh, regimes to have its own people but uh, crips uh, mission uh, came out with some idea that no fine uh, we can um, have that the now the constitution shall be made by the indians solely and not primarily and that is a significant development to have an idea of a constituent assembly so another level of of then again uh, we did not go with uh, the crips missions because we thought that it's a opportunity for the indians because the world is experiencing at that point uh, at that point the most lethal war that is world war second and the we are uh, british government may not be able to uh, maintain its its colony uh, colonial influence in india and therefore the indians saw an opportunity to bargain more and more and therefore a quit india resolution on august 8th uh, 1942 was being passed and that resolution is all about saying that that the provisional government of free india would evolve a scheme of a constituent assembly which would prepare a constitution acceptable to all sections of the indian society see that now clear cut demand is being made so we are no longer interested in any person coming and telling us that what ought to be the nature that now indian provinces will decide that what ought to be the nature of the constituent assembly and we will make our own constitution so that quit india resolutions happened that also uh, being realized but finally uh, uh, there was a cabinet mission plan and in cabinet mission plan crips was also a member there was a uh, lord patrick lawrence who was by that time uh, i uh, uh, i if i remember secretary of the state and another member was stafford crips himself and the third member was that av alexander these three people uh, uh, were the part of the cabinet mission uh, plan and the idea was being thought of in on march 15 and that uh, when that on march 15th 9 it was being constituted it came in india and it arrived in new delhi uh, on march 24th 1946 the object of this cabinet uh, mission plan was to uh, set the uh, set in motion a machinery where a constitution can be settled by indians for indians so settled by indians and for indians now no influence now the idea is now being accepted similarly and uh, the league and congress though did not agree uh, uh, to come to an agreement uh, with whatever being offered by the cabinet mission plan then a plan was uh, uh, was announced both in england uh, and in on 16th may 1946 that cabinet mission plan and that cabinet mission plan uh, was all about that uh, I was all about recommending india is to be a confederation of three groups of autonomous states uh, vesting the powers of defense external powers and communication in the uh, central government and all remaining powers uh, with the uh, group demission each group uh, free to have its own constitution that is uh, two plans they have thought of the long term plan and the short term plan offered by the cabinet mission plan and long term plan was all about the future political setup what ought to be the future political setup of india and the short term was all about that immediate interim government is to be constituted so finally that uh, uh, plan of a constituent assembly uh, was being thought of there must be a constituent assembly and each provinces in that constituent assembly each provinces to have seats in proportion to their population means all about that one seat uh, uh, per million one million. in proportion to their population means the sikh and the uh, hindus and the christians and anglo indians and other uh, groups religious group will also have their representation in proportion to their uh, their population so total number of seats in the uh, constituent assembly at that point of time was being proposed as there must be a 389 uh, uh, members in the constituent assembly and that 389 was divided 
as that british india will have uh, 292 members chief commissioners province uh, would have uh, four seats and the indian state that time princely indian states would have 93 seats and finally that the representation of the british uh, indian provinces were to be a uh, representatives of the british indian provinces were to be elected by a single transferable vote uh, system and congress accepted the proposal while league had all the reservations at that point of time hope you are getting my points uh, if you have any questions till now we can uh, have a discussion No questions? So finally, uh, that uh, the plan had its own problems, uh, but the Congress had the overwhelming majority uh, in the Constituent Assembly from uh, December 1945 to, uh, because they were a sizable number when uh, uh, if you will look at the configuration of the provincial legislatures elections uh, in 1945, almost all that, the, that elections gave uh, league most of the Muslim seats in all provinces and all the uh, uh, Muslim seats in some provinces. Of the total uh, 1585 seats uh, in the provincial assemblies that the Congress won, 925 or 58% uh, uh, it captured almost of uh, the 85 percent of the non-Muslim. The scheme of the indirect elections, and at that point of time, and finally, uh, lots of things has happened uh, in July 1946 when uh, elections to the assembly uh, has to be happened. The league members won almost all, but seven of the seats reserved for the Muslims. Uh, Congress candidates filled uh, 203. Uh, of the 212 uh, general places representing every community except six and communities. Additionally, the Congress parties in the uh, provincial legislatures elected uh, uh, four Muslims and six, uh, giving Congress a 208 uh, seats out of the total 296 one uh, and allotted by uh, to the uh, provincial states and uh, uh, states and thus the remaining 16 uh, uh, percent uh, seats uh, were to be. Uh, uh, five small groups and 15 seats almost uh, was being uh, uh, won by the uh, by the uh, uh, independents at that point of time and uh, uh, this was the whole uh, scenario at that point of time and uh, giving a new shape to the constituent assembly So this is all about uh, a constituent assembly when a uh, constituent assembly uh, uh, convened its session on uh, 9th of uh, December 1946. By the time uh, Congress members have only joined that assembly, the first session uh, happened. And in that first session uh, on, on 9th December 1946, Sachidanand Sinha uh, was given the uh, charge of presidentship of the uh, Congress of the Constituent Assembly, and then S. C. Mukherjee and uh, uh, Krishna Machari uh, was given a vice presidential position, and uh, this was the whole scenario. And uh, on 11th the, uh, December 1946, uh, formal elections have uh, 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 for, uh, Pandit uh, 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 Dr. Rajendra Prasad uh, was being nominated as the uh, president of the Constituent Assembly and that Constituent Assembly uh, had to finally draft a Constitution of India and that Constituent Assembly took almost uh, two years, 11 months and 18 days to draft its own Constitution. And uh, not only that, that uh, Assembly has set on 165 days of that 114 uh, times is all about to debate and discuss the uh, uh, draft of the Constitution. and. Loads of changes were being suggested and more than 7,000 amends, amendments were being proposed and considered and finally our constitution came into being uh, our constitution uh, by uh, 26th of November 1949 
we adopt it, enact it, and give to ourselves our own constitution with almost everything acceptable by uh, by twenty uh, second January nineteen forty uh, nineteen fifty twenty second January twenty uh, fourth January nineteen uh, uh, fifty. We had the signature of two eighty four members, and therefore draft was complete. But we waited for two more days. Uh, for 26 January, because in 1930 we have already decided that we will be celebrating uh, 26 January uh, as Independence Day due to the Pune Swaraj resolutions mooted by Jawaharlal Nehru in the then Indian National Congress sessions, and therefore we thought of that we will have our own uh, constitution on 26th January 1950, and that day India was ready with its own constitution, uh, 395 articles. Uh, eight scheduled 22 parts were there in our constitutions and we were uh, really, really uh, so uh, happy at that point of time. But there was unhappiness that the Pakistan and India was partitioned as well. By the end of January 1947, it was already clear that there is no possibility of Muslim League joining the assembly. So an uncompromising call for a separate constituent assembly for Pakistan was being mooted by uh, Jinnah. On June uh, 26, 1947, Lord Mountbatten, the then Governor General, uh, announced the setup of, of a constituent assembly uh, for Pakistan, the Indian Independence Act 1947, which was passed with a surprising speed, came into force on July 18, 1947. The Indian Independence Act 1947 declared the constituent assembly to be a fully sovereign body on the midnight of August 14, 15, 1947. The assembly assumed full power of the governance of the country. Section 8 of the act conferred on the constituent assembly full legislative power. This is all about the, uh, the constituent assembly, uh, uh, which we have thought of discussing it. If you have any question, you can have uh, your hands raised and else we can move, we can move to another level of discussions.